Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast. And it's getting near that time of year again. It's getting close to Halloween, so we're gonna, gonna shift focus, definitely focus more on some uh, some spooky content over the next month or so. And then, uh, you know, in November we'll get back to the usual mix of stuff. But uh, in terms of this coming month on this channel, I'm gonna have... Definitely a uh, Asian horror addendum video for my typical Asian horror playlist stuff. I'm gonna do a kind of top ten list, I guess you could say, horror related. And then I'm gonna do a pickups video, which is this video here. And then I'm gonna review a, uh, review a bunch of individual movies throughout the month. And a few of those will be here tonight as well. So this is these pickups are really throughout the year. These are like my horror-related pickups that I made throughout much of the year. And most of them are DVDs. They are DVDs, so don't, don't look down upon me. Beggars cannot be choosers. So some of these films are actually not even available on Blu-ray. So you'll have to forgive me. But I don't, I don't care. <laughs> as long as I have the film in my collection, I can watch it whenever I want. I'm fine with DVDs. So that's... Let's get to it. We got a nice a nice mix of stuff. Most of it is Japanese, though. It is. Now, the first one here is actually a film from Thailand. And it's an older one. Older is in 2006 or so. And that is The Victim. Now, I did review this in my Asian horror uh, playlist probably a few years ago at this point. But I wanted to add it to my collection. So, uh, you know, it's a pretty good flick. I wanted to beef up my... Thai horror, uh, you know, collection a little bit, especially the ones that I think are pretty good. So you, this film is basically about an aspiring actress who's hired by the cops to kind of do reenactments of deaths at murder scenes in an effort to catch the perpetrators. So the cops will be like, okay, we want to reenact this. Maybe we'll see something, you know, and uh, uh, maybe uh, figure out what happened exactly and catch these bad guys. So she participates in that. Unfortunately, of course, there's a supernatural element to this, and uh, things get pretty bad for her, you know what I mean? Some possession occurs, and she has to try to figure out the mystery, of course, before she's permanently, I guess, dead. <laughs> I guess that's what you could say. So the victim, this is the Tartan Asia Extreme release, and it has a making of, a theatrical trailer, TV spots... And uh, yeah, a few special features here. Watch this if you liked the eye, just to scare yourself silly, it says. So I'm always happy to get a ta uh, Tartan Asia Extreme release, just because they're, uh, they're one of the few labels that I actually care about. I'm not really like a big label guy or boutique label guy who, I don't just collect anything just because of the distributor. I, I really focus on the specific movies that I want. And it just so happens that a bunch of movies in the Tartan Asia Extreme Collection are movies that I want to add to my collection. So, The Victim is a good Thai horror film. It's not one of the best, I don't think. But uh, it's, it's worth watching if you're into Asian horror. Now, one I reviewed recently, we're going to Korea next for the next handful. And this one is The Odd Family. Zombie for Sale. Also known as Zombie on Sale or something like that. There's has a few different titles. I did a full-length review of this. It's a little bit different from a typical zombie film, especially the opening half is, is very different. And, uh, you know, just the way this family, they basically, you have this family out in the, out in the you know, the middle of nowhere, really, like a, a village area, and a zombie escapes some facility, and he, he strolls by, and they basically capture him i guess you could say and then they use him for profit so it's uh it's pretty neat it's got like definitely a humor angle to it there's quite a bit of comedy to this but the way that the zombies incorporated into the humor is quite different from a typical i guess uh zombie horror comedy the acting is good it's quite quaint and charming second half gets into a little bit more of typical zombie shenanigans but it's still a little different because of the you know, the quirky characters and the humor that's, that is present. So, I do recommend this film, The Odd Family, Zombie on Sale. This is the, I believe, the Region 3 DVD uh, with English subtitles. 
So again, check out my full-length review if you want more information on that. It's a good flick. If you're tired of the usual zombie stuff, that one's a little different. Now this one, you're going to look at me like cross-eyed when I show you this one. Because you might be surprised that I actually don't have this in my collection. Even though it's like the staple uh, release for Korean horror from back in the day. But I actually just recently acquired this, and that is the Ghost School Trilogy from Tartan Asia Extreme. Now, I do have a few of these movies already on DVD. This is a DVD set. But the difference here is that my uh, this is three movies in the Whispering Corridors franchise. So you got Whispering Corridors, Memento Mori, and Wishing Stairs. Now, my version of whispering quarters that i already have is like a it's kind of like an all region kind of malaysian type release and i didn't have the actual tartan release and then uh this set also includes a fourth disc of some extra special features so i'm like you know i picked this up for like 20 bucks at most It was like 19 bucks or something and uh i figured okay i already have the movies but i get a better version of the first film and an extra bonus disc and technically kind of like backup copies just in case something happens to my older discs and this series whispering corridors i am reviewing all of the films separately in october on my channel so that'll be that'll be pretty neat i did review them already in my asian horror playlist however um you know every october every once in a while i like to shine a spotlight on some of the ones that are uh you know really worth watching so i'm going to do the whispering corridors films there's five of them and I'm going to review all five of them in separate reviews and uh, you'll probably rank them at the end or something like that. So this box that kind of opens up and you have the bonus disc over here with some extra special features. And then inside here you get the separate discs, the separate releases. Now these films are very, and I'll go through this in my individual re reviews, very... I call them romanticized because they're very like classical type horror films where they don't necessarily rely on visceral scares as much as you might expect. They rely more on character development, drama, themes, and then the horror is used to kind of supplement that stuff. So uh, uh, especially, this is especially true for, uh, you know, four of the five entries, one of which I'm not the biggest fan of, but... Uh, these first three here are all pretty solid. And the cool thing about these films is that they're all very different from one another. You know? They are. Even though they're part of the same franchise and have similar, I guess, uh, themes and overall stylings to them. So this DVD, uh, Whispering Corridors, uh, you get the Tartan Asia Extreme new releases. I always like that, uh, that uh, little montage that they have on these. And that's how I found a few movies when I first started renting films uh, from Tartan, they would have the new releases thing on the DVDs, and I would watch the new releases, and I would be like, ooh, that movie looks interesting, and then I'd, I'd watch it, and I'd be like, ooh, that movie looks interesting, and i watched watch that. So that's pretty cool. And uh, it has a photo gallery as well. Now, these are all films that take place in all-girls high schools, and they all involve some type of supernatural uh, conflicts that occur. Now, the second one, Memento Mori, is its own storyline. You can watch these in any order. They have separate stories. They're not direct sequels. This one is a little bit more like an art house horror film, very, even more focused on drama. And the horror is, is lighter, even lighter in this one. And uh, again, pretty the, the character development in this one's arguably the best, though, of the whole franchise. You have a making of featurette. Uh, Tartan Asia Extreme new releases in a photo gallery. And again, these are all Region 1. Region 1 releases. This is a very good film. This was uh, arguably my favorite horror franchise of all time, actually, for a little while. Until the fifth one came out. <laughs> it added like, you know, the fifth one was, was kind of a downgrade in my opinion. But before the fifth one came out, the first four, I was like, this is like easily my top 10 in my top 10 horror franchises just because they're they're so well made and uh they have a heart to them 
You have Wishing Stair. This one's probably the creepiest Wishing Stairs out of the bunch. I'm making a featurette. Director's sketchbook and notes. Promotional materials. Photo gallery. New releases. And you'll get a few big time actresses in these too. Not necessarily the first one, but in part two, three, and four, all have at least one actress that's like big time now. So it's interesting to see them very early in their careers in these quality horror films. So I'm, I'm kind of happy I picked this up. Kind of ashamed that I never had it in my collection. I think it was worth it. Yeah, very nice little box set here. Also, I picked up Blood Pledge, part five. Now I already have part four. Uh, I have to already have two versions of part four actually, so I didn't need to buy that one again. But I did not did not have part five in my collection, with the exception of like a like a bad like bootleg version or something. I think, I think I have something like that in there without subtitles. Uh, so I wanted to, I got the legitimate version, even though this is my least favorite of the franchise. I wanted to rewatch it again and reassess it for my review. So you'll see my again my full thoughts on all of these films as I post them in the upcoming month. No no real space special features on this one either um so yes but again every once in a while i'll get a movie and you'll see there's a few here that i'm like man you know what i wasn't the biggest fan of that but i feel like watching it again and i buy it because you can't get it you can't get these streaming sometimes and uh and then i'll watch it again i'm like man that movie was pretty good as we'll see in some of these other films i'm covering here tonight so that's my korean set now we do Japanese, and that's the bulk of this video. So I'm just going to fire away here. Another Heaven. Again, an old school kind of thriller horror flick that I just didn't have in my collection. You know, back in the day I thought it was good, uh, and I felt like rewatching it. So I got it, and uh, again, a lot of these when I felt like rewatching them, I was going to stream them. But for some reason, I couldn't find them streaming because, you know, I think streaming's somewhat overrated in terms of accessibility. Films just disappear. So I'm like, ah, I'll buy it. I remember liking it, and I liked it even more when I saw it recently. This one's cool. It's about these, these cops, and there's this woman going around who's almost like a femme fatale. She kind of almost kind of seduces men and then brutally murders them. And then she cooks her body parts and like eats them, <laughs> from what I remember. And it's uh, yeah, it gets a little dark. It's not too violent or too. It gets a little a little bloody, but not excessively so. And these cops are trying to figure out like who this woman is because it. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to spoil it. There's something odd about this villain that's somewhat unhuman. Let's put it that way. So this is, uh, I really enjoyed this uh, after a recent viewing. And I think it really definitely, oh, you have uh, Yosuke Iguchi is the main actor in this, who's who's been around. You'll notice him uh, in fi when you watch this. And this, yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm definitely going to watch this one again in the future. It, it has kind of a, a slightly long run time at over two hours, but it, it definitely works. You get... A Fangoria article in here. Fangoria presents trailers. Interactive menu scenes. No, that's not special features. So yeah, this is a good one. It's pretty cool. Check out Another Heaven if you haven't already. Neat little thriller. Oh boy. I have to issue an apology for the next one. A few of these movies. Now again, like I said earlier in this video, I'm doing an addendum video to my Asian horror uh, playlist you know the big playlist with like 70 videos on it that I have and I'm going to re-review a few movies so there were some movies that I reviewed in that playlist maybe I didn't like them that much maybe I thought they were just okay and I rewatched them after at some point in the, the last like three four years and I like them more so I'm going to re-review them uh, as well as cover any other films that I missed during the first time around uh, in that playlist so in that first addendum, I think there's going to be three or four in this pile that I'm going to cover. And this next film I voted as the worst Asian horror film of 2004. And I'm kind of feeling guilty. <laughs> I'm feeling guilty. Technically, it probably is. But in terms of entertainment value, it really doesn't deserve it. 
<laughs> Marinay. Yes, a doll horror movie. Now, this movie, it is horrible. It's horrible. But here's the thing. I like, and I'll talk about this more in my addendum video, but like the first time I saw it, I thought it was entertainingly bad. And then I rewatched it again before I did 2004, before I covered 2004, and I just wasn't in the right mood when I sat down and watched it. I don't know what it was. I was totally not in the mood for like a, a so bad it's good film, and I just didn't like it. And so yeah, I'm gonna have to revise my my opinion and uh, maybe give the award for worst Asian horror film to a different film in my addendum. This movie is it's really bad. It's it, like the editing is off. The acting is is not good. You know, it's got like it's so hard to describe the film. It, it's it's really just uh, shoddy. You know, you could tell they were going for some humor intentionally in some spots, but it's about a girl who is getting stalked by a guy who also is working for a mad artist who makes dolls out of human corpses, which sounds cool. Ugh, you know, the, the budget was like, this is like a student film type thing, you know? If you watch Red Letter Media, this would be on, like, Best of the Worst. Like, that's that's the type of quality you're talking about. So this film has some trailers, an interview with uh, Junji Ito, because he's the producer in this, and uh, supervising producer. So, you know, you get his involvement at least, right? You get some doll galleries and some deleted scenes. Yeah, if you want something that's really, really low grade, really low grade, but entertaining in its low gradeness, I would recommend this. And I'll I'll talk about it more in my Asian horror playlist addendum video. Man, that one you, you do have to be kind of in the right mood. All right, did not have this in my collection. Juon, the beginning of the end. Which I think is actually a really underrated film. It's underrated. And, you know, you got Nozomi Sasaki and Raina Trendle in it. Two actresses that can hold the screen. Let me fire up my notes here. Just to get some notes in. Because I, I haven't seen this one in a little while. Juon. Beginning of the end. Yeah. So again, you have a typical plot here. But you have uh, Masayuki Ochiai as the director in this. And he's the same guy who did The Hypnotist, um, Infection, that type of thing. So you have a pretty good horror director coming into the franchise and kind of taking over. Kind of late in the game. Because this was like a 2014 film. And I think he did a good job. You know, check out my review on my Asian horror playlist from 2014. I think, you know, the actresses held the screen well. I think they threw little curveballs in throughout this film where it's like oh it's gonna play out like a typical juon film oh no wait you know and they add a little curve a little twist at the end of some of the scenes and the final shot of this movie the final shot of it is it's almost like from from creep show or something like it doesn't even feel like a juon uh scene and i liked it because it was a pretty cool unexpected scene and some people didn't because it wasn't really traditionally juon so if you want something a little different, Juon with a twist, check out Juon Beginning of the End. I actually quite enjoyed this. This is the Region 3 release. Another Heaven and Marinade were both the Region 1 releases. And then to round out my Juon collection, to have, you know, just I had like seven out of the eight movies or whatever, so I'm like, ah, I'll pick up the last one. Juon the Final Curse from 2015. Again, directed by Masuki Ochiai. This one, though, was kind of a step down. From beginning of the end it's watchable but uh i didn't really like the actresses much in this one i was kind of hoping they bring nozomi sasaki back or or something you know get somebody in with a little bit more flair it just felt a little bit more generic the horror scenes didn't work quite as well you know what i mean this is a film that kind of uh almost felt like it was kind of like running out of gas a little bit but again if you're a fan of juan it's not terrible i don't think really I don't know if any of the Juon films are really terrible on the Japanese side. So I, I definitely prefer them to the Ring franchise. Because I can tell you right now, there are some terrible Ring films. <laughs> At least three that come to mind off the top of my head. 
Juwan is the more re uh, reliable franchise, in my opinion. So here's another one. A few re-reviews. All right. Actually, one of them I don't even think I covered in the, the playlist, but Shinya Tsukamoto. One of the films that never really worked for me that well. Hiruko the Goblin. There's Naoto Takanaka on the front cover. He only has kind of like a cameo in the film, or extended cameo. You know, I always had kind of problems with this film, and I'm like, well, I have just about every other Shinya Tsukamoto film, and every once in a while, I just kind of feel like watching this. So I bought it, I popped it in, and I actually legitimately enjoyed it this time. You know, I finally connected with it. So really, there's... there's the only film of Tsukamoto's that I don't like is his short film in Female, which doesn't even really count. So, you know, Hiruko the Goblin, it's, it's, uh, the good thing about this movie is it feels different. This is a movie from the early 90s, I think, and it, uh, you have these weird goblin, you have, like, a person's head that's on, like, spider legs, and they walk around and fly at people and kill people. It's got, uh, it's got something different to it. It's got some pizzazz, some spunk. I'm going to do a re-review of this because I, I reviewed it in my Asian Horror Playlist and I gave it kind of a negative review. But I'm going to reassess it in my addendum video. I think it's pretty cool. It's a good flick. Worth watching. Special features. Uh, interview with Shinya Sugimoto. Trailer. Interview with special effects designer. Fangoria International and Shriek Show Trailers, Photo Gallery. So yeah, it's got some special features on it. Again, Region 1 release. And we're going to another one of my favorite directors in early work, Kiyoshi Kurosawa's Guard from the Underground. Again, this one was one I was always kind of cold on. I was like, eh, it's, it's, it's kind of dull. But then I sat down and rewatched it not long ago, and I kind of liked it. Not as much as Huruko the Goblin, but I did like it. You know, it's a slasher that really doesn't have the goods in terms of death scenes, which is a big no-no. But it does have a certain style to it and some suspense, which makes it a little bit more watchable than you might expect. And plus it takes place in, like, an office complex, and I'm, you know, I'm big on films that take place in office complex since I've worked in offices for so long. And, uh, yeah, this movie's not bad. It's not bad. I'll do a re-review of it on my, uh, or probably a first review of it on my addendum video. It does have a feature-length commentary with Tom S. I didn't even know it had that. Oh, that's big. I gotta listen to that commentary. I didn't know we did a commentary on this. Nice. It's worth getting for that alone. Biofilmographies. Again, if you want, like, a good, solid Japanese slasher from back in the day, you go with Evil Dead Trap, baby. You go with Evil Dead Trap. You know, Guard from the Underground is like, a, if you're a big fan of Kyoshi Kurosawa and you want to see his earlier work, is where you pick this up. All right, a more recent film that's probably the most popular Japanese film of the last ten years. One Cut of the Dead. Yes, I believe this is all region release. But, uh... If you have not seen this movie, of all the films I'm talking about tonight, this should be your highest priority. It's fantastic. The script writing in this film is just phenomenal. I got to see it when I was vacationing in Japan, and I enjoyed it a lot, even without subtitles. So the subtitles help, but uh, they're not exactly necessary to really enjoy it. They're just go into it blind. I'm not going to tell you what it's about. It's kind of a horror comedy, I guess as you could say, with a fantastic script. You have to watch this. There's no passing this by. And another film I saw, uh, was it last year? Man, I feel, no, maybe I saw this one two years ago when I was in Japan. I saw this one last year when I was in Japan. Hell Girl, the live action adaptation from Koji Shiraishi. This is, this movie has some really awesome visuals for a horror film. You know, when I saw it on the big screen, I mean, there's a lot of atmosphere in this movie. And it's got a really interesting premise. I did a, a full-length review of it on my channel, of course, just like One Cut of the Dead. And it's just uh, really neat. Really neat. This is the Region 2 Japan release, though. 
This is the Region 2 Japan DVD without subtitles. Beggars can't be choosers, folks. You know, I don't know if they'll ever release this in the United States. They, you know, Koji Shiraishi's films, very bad distribution. You know, they did release um, Cult. You know, uh, they released Noroi digitally. Uh, Shirome, I think, was released digitally. And then what was the one recently? Uh, oh, what was it called? Hold on a second. Let me look at it. Because there's a oh, record of sweet murder. Yeah, a record of sweet murder was released, which was kind of odd. I didn't expect that one to get a release. But yeah, this one, I don't think it'll get a release uh, anytime soon, maybe. It's already been a year, almost a year since it came out in Japan. But maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe we'll get a release of this. But if not, I say splurge and get the Japanese DVD. I think this movie is really good, really interesting and good quality. And because I like the movie so much, I got the Hell Girl anime series. This is the Malaysian release, all four seasons, all, you know, 90 episodes, so I hope it's good. Uh, just because I like the movie so much, I want to go back to the uh, the core basics and foundation of the Jikoku Shoujo uh, intellectual property. So again, the whole premise of this is a girl, and with the live action film, is, a, is like this demon girl who you can call, you can summon her. To send someone to hell. If you hate someone or they wronged you, you want to send them to freaking hell, you call Hell Girl and she sends them to hell. But the problem is that when you die, you automatically go to hell. So that's, you know, that's a pretty big sacrifice for revenge. And uh, believe it or not, some people choose to do it. And it, it, it explores it in a pretty interesting ways. So I think I think the live action film is Koji Shiraishi's second best film behind Noroi. Um, so we'll see if the anime can, can really kind of, uh, be a mem memorable experience for me. Here's another film I reviewed not too long ago. And again, it's one that frees me. It's one that, uh, I saw back in the day, I remember liking it, and I just felt like rewatching it, and it wasn't available streaming, I don't believe. So I picked up the DVD. And it's really good. It's actually significantly better than I even remembered it being. This is from director Takashi Ishii, who has done his fair share of of pretty uh, naughty things in terms of films. And some, some cool films as well, like uh, Gonin. He did the Gonin films. This one is a, a biography. So this one, Region 1 release, is about a woman who gets sexually assaulted years ago. She moves out of town, and these bad guys find out where she lives and try to do it again in her apartment, but uh, things don't go quite as planned for them. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So this is kind of a, a very, it's, it's far more high quality than you might expect. Check out my full-length review of it uh, for some additional thoughts, but I'm glad I have this in my collection, because this is, it's one of Ishii's most purely entertaining and and impressive films. Another one that, believe it or not, was not in my collection. Suicide Club. Yes, Shion Sono, an early horror film from him. This might be his first one, I believe. And, uh, you know, this one is about mysterious uh, trend of suicides happening across Tokyo. And some cops try to figure out what the heck's going on. First time I saw this movie, eh, I didn't really think it was all that good. I thought it bit off more than it could chew with its themes and content. I think it still does. Uh, but over time, after a few re repeat viewings, I grew to really appreciate the horror aspects of this movie. And uh, that's kind of what won me over in the end. And it's something I like to watch uh, every once in a while. You know, if you watch a movie and you think it's good... And then like three or four or five years later, like, man, I really want to watch that movie again. You know what I mean? There's something else to it that you're missing. There's something else to it that you're missing. When you watch it again, you appreciate it more. Usually. That's how, that's how I see it. Whereas if you see a film, you think it's pretty good, and you never think of it again, you know, what's the point in owning it? You, you know what I mean? I just, I just wouldn't even bother. Now the next two... 
are blind buys because I had no choice. Not available, not available uh, streaming. Of course, why would they be? Um, and they're terrible. <laughs> Corpse Prison. All right, I got part one and two here because it's one big movie cut in half, so I had to get both at the same time. And wow, these movies are just not good, people. So these, these is the, this is the one where they arrive at a mountain complex. All right, so they go to a mountain... And they know there's something wrong. This is the one. Now I remember this. This is the one that's kind of a ripoff of X Cross from 2007. And you get the this like village people are like cutting women's legs off. If it sounds familiar to you from X Cross, and it's like, oh, we gotta figure out what these village these weird village people are doing, and all this stuff. It has a few pretty good ideas to it. There's like a little girl who turns out to have some. I don't know, interesting aspects to her that I liked. But for, for the most part, it's really like low-budget, kind of boring films with bad death scenes. This one isn't bad. Perfect Blue. Satoshi Kon, very good anime thriller. Again, this is one that grows on me every time I watch it. First time I saw it, I liked it. But then after I saw it again, I'm like, wow, this is a very good movie. This is the Blu-ray DVD combo pack. And uh, it has lectures from Satoshi Kon. Recording sessions, cast and crew interviews, theatrical trailers, etc. If you haven't seen this and you like dark-themed anime films, definitely check this out. It's a very good uh, anime for adults, I guess you could say. It's got some violence and nudity and stuff like that in it. It's also pretty creepy. Here's what I'm looking forward to. Last Supper from 2005. You got Hitomi Miwa there. And my man, uh, Masaya Kato, is the main lead in this. I, I love him. And it's basically one where this guy, like, from what I remember, he, he gets involved with this, like, underground, uh, I guess, partying, uh, how can I say, it? lifestyle. And he becomes obsessed with cannibalism. So he wants to basically, like, murder people and then eat them for culinary purposes, you know, because he likes to taste so much. And that's Messiah Kato, our main character. And I remember it being a, a, a macabre film, but not excessive. You know, good quality flick. You could check out my review on the Asian Horror Play. This from 2005. This one has... Man, it's just all subtitles. These, none of these are like special features. It has trailers, <laughs> is basically what it has. But I'm looking forward to rewatching this because it's been a little while since I have. See her, that's a great shot of her decapitated head on uh, lettuce being served. He's serving himself. Now here's one that was a blind, that was a, a purchase of a film that I wasn't real big on before that I thought I was going to like. Uh, after a, a repeat viewing, because you're talking about Hiruko the Goblin, Guard from the Underground, you know what I mean? These films that I, I'm like, ooh, even Marinade, like, ooh, I can, uh, I like these films now. I'm on a streak of films that I was iffy on in the past that I like now. So I'm like, ooh, I'll do Ghost Train next. And it, it didn't improve <laughs> after my repeat. It's exactly how I thought it was back in the day. You know, it's about a haunted train pass, that, you know, kids find, or people find, and then they, they end up getting, basically dying from ghost attacks. And, uh, it's, it's not terrible. And you do have Erika Sawajiri in it, and Erika Sawajiri comes close to making it watchable herself. Um, but it's just, it's just not, it doesn't have quite enough oomph to it to get it over the edge to be a recommendable film. But it's not terrible. I know some people, there's some people out there that like it. The Making of Ghost Train. Commentary with the English voice actors. I might, I might do that. It might be kind of interesting. If it's a full-length commentary, it's almost like just other actors just talking about a movie that they didn't make, but they just voice acted for. That might be interesting. I might listen to that. Yeah. Get on. Get dead is the tagline. Hold on tight. There's no light at the end of this tunnel. Yeah. 
Here's another one I'm going to be interested to rewatch. It sounds terrible. Zombie self-defense force. <laughs> from like this is like from 2006 this movie and it 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 reminds you the title reminds you of what was it um the girls rebel force of competitive swimmers or something like remember that one where it's like a, a team of schoolgirls and it was a zombie film and it was horrible but this one i remember actually being pretty good i remember this one being good zombie self-defense force and it's got like <clears throat> I wish I would have uh, checked my notes. Actually, I could check it right now. I'm going to end up reviewing this in my addendum, in one of my addendum videos. I'm going to need to do three of them. So, Zombie Self Defense Force. So, it, uh, on a routine training exercise, soldiers from the Japan Self Defense Force encounter a UFO that releases strange radiation, and the inhabitants turn into zombies. But, it's more entertaining than expected nice paced zombies are all over the place they're uh slow moving zombies old school and this is from the same production company as high school girl rika zombie hunter and uh it's got it's it's just amusing it's like it's a horror comedy and you know we've seen a lot of crappy zombie horror comedies but this movie i remember having a certain charm to it so it'll be interesting to see if it holds up or not when I watch it again and review it. I like my B-horror movies, people, especially when they're Japanese. And finally, one of the, I guess, highest quality films we'll be talking about tonight. Isola. I just rewatched this one again the other night. This is a cool flick. It, it's a little slow paced, but if you have a little bit of patience, it's got some good creeps to it. It's got a good premise. You have this... Uh, this girl who can read people's minds and she does it even when she doesn't want to it's just like you know automatic for her and she meets this other girl who has 13 personalities and one of her personalities is a vicious murderer and uh and as it turns out there's like a history with this other personality that's pretty neat and the, the psychic girl tries to help this other girl with the 13 personalities because she it's not really her fault that her 13th personality is a psycho <laughs> so it's a different premise and i think it does a good job of developing the characters and it's kind of a mad scientist vibe to it at times which is pretty neat and uh it's worth watching you just need a little bit of patience because it's kind of slow cast interviews making a featurette trailers this is again region one as was zombie zombie self-defense force and ghost train and last supper those are all Region 1 releases. That's all I got for you. That's, uh, so, Priorities, One Cut of the Dead. You absolutely have to watch that. And anything else that seemed interesting to you. Obviously, the Whispering Quarter films are, are cool. And we'll be talking about those this month. As well as a, a few other uh, uh, discussions on these films later on. In various forms. Some of the movies I'm covering will be a surprise, though. So, hopefully you'll like that. And as always, I'll see you next time.